Hey, what's up? That's right. Welcome to the What More Can I Say podcast, episode 64. 64. That's what we are. Man, we've done this 64 times, which is crazy. I'm your host, Togo Capone. This is my co-host. Let's go ahead and get these introductions out of the way so we can jump into the pod, everybody. Uh, the first lady of the pod, the only lady of the pod, Key Key. What up, big girl magic? And we see, we see you shining over there. Hey, y'all. What's going on? Yes, Kiki, I see you. Yes. Y'all look good. Y'all all right? Yeah, we good. We okay, good. Okay, because this intro be a little dry when I say, hey, y'all, you know, kinda, <laughs> you know, it's like the baby when he was up there, you know, talking about HIV. I'm, where my dudes at? Where the fellas at? Wake up. What's up? <laughs> what? It's a- <laughs> I'm just saying, like the baby. She's crazy. Yeah. I'm hey, girl. hey, Kiki girl. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for, hey, Zach. Girl, yes. <laughs> yes. Thank yeah. you, Zach. Thank you. Wake him up. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. That is our other co host, Zach Bug, who's fresh <laughs> off of Magic Silly Monday. What's up, Zach Bug? Hey, Tonka Ball. Oh, sorry. I'm going to turn my camera off. All right, I'm being extremely too spicy on the pod. I don't know what that's about. Um, hey man, look, but hey yeah. man, how you feeling though, bro? I know you you fresh off the stage, so you you still in comic mode right now? Yeah, I'm still in comic mode. I got to to calm it down a little bit. Try to get into podcast mode. But hey, I'm gonna let you know, Max Silly Mondays, come on out Monday night, pod fam. We have a lot of fun. Woo. That's right. We need to have a what more can I say? Uh, pod day. Then, like everybody come, gotta come. We gotta decide what day yes. that everybody that watches the pod is mean, gonna come and support. We gotta all go go to Magic yeah, Silly Monday. I'll have a pod section. Yes, I like that. Yes, we need to make mm-hmm. that happen. Dick. We need yeah, a pod yeah. day. Pod day for sure. Let's speak of the pod, let's get right to it. The baby. That's right. The baby has been in the middle of all the news basically just talking about all the stuff that he was saying hiv he gay community he's just been doing all type of craziness then he put up an apology and now it's deleted what the hell zach man listen the baby deleted the apology the le- the baby didn't want to apologize he's still on this high horse as if he was fighting for freedoms or rights or something bro you said some stuff you offended some people you need to apologize but guess what they taking them off radio now now it's really getting bad can't perform at festivals. Now you're getting ready to be off the radio. Where are you going? Where are you going to get your income from? If they take you off streaming platforms, there's no way for you to put your music out unless you hustle it out your trunk like Master P in the '90s. And who wants to do that? Hmm. Nobody. These, this is this is ugly. This is getting really ugly for the baby. Do I think it's deserved? No, I, I don't. I don't think like the crime is worth the punishment right now. I don't. I don't agree with what he said, but I think the, this this crime is harsh. You know, <laughs> we're trying to pump up the crowd a couple times. You know, um, but I don't think you said it's, it it's though, not just exactly. for that. It's for after you did it and you upset people. You then you 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 did you weren't humble. You you took you wanted to be an asshole, and they was like, okay, we'll show you. That that's the thing. That, in my opinion, that's the crime deserves the punishment. The crime he committed. But then the other crime that made it worse was the pride that he's living on. He, he yeah. is holding on to it instead of apologizing and keeping it pushing, Kiki. What you think? I it's I hate to see it. They said they're taking a the man credits off a of billboard. Like, I didn't even know you could do that. You know, they didn't even did that to R. Kelly yet, I don't think. You know, like, <laughs> it's real bad for the baby. And, you know, I don't understand the logic behind removing the apology, like, you know, he treating us like, you know, he just treating the, this whole situation like it's a joke. Like, this is not funny. I don't know how much money in his account, but I would not play with my bag like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, it would be a lot of damage control being done. Um, you know, I would be down there marching and, 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 and you know, I'm going to do what I got to do to protect my coin. So I don't know why the baby is riding this thing out, but, you know, to each his own, but like, Baby, I don't know if he waiting on a stimulus check or what, but it's you know, over. How you take the apology ain't got it. down? How do you take the apology? To, like he posted, you know how people post pictures and remove them all the time. Like how you go? You can't do that with this. You know everybody's watching your page right now, so it's just it's the boldness for me. It's like you know, I don't get it. I don't. He, 
he took it down like he broke up with his ex. You yeah, know how them pictures like, come down quick? Yeah. He took it down. <laughs> Don't nothing He's going to figure it out. Post. <laughs> he going to figure it out. The yeah. baby going to figure it out. See, the thing of it is, the baby doesn't realize how fast rap moves. He, for some reason, his mind, he like, I'm the baby. Everybody loves me. They going to watch me. The baby, they will replace you, bro. So fast. So fast. Look at what they did to Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon just coming back up from air. He oh. just now doing, think about it. They suspended Nick for a year. Nick was done for a year. Cook. Sit. About six months. You know, Nick was, Nick had the man singing. They didn't even show him. He was hosting it, but never got, he was never on nothing. I was like, how did they do that? Yeah. Yeah. Nick was canceled. They legit put Nick on one year worth of punishment. And the baby might turn around and get one year worth of punishment. But the difference when you're a rapper, one year off is like 10 years off. Baby. You can't take a you can't take a year off of rap. You barely can take three months off of rap. And we come out of the pandemic. And we come gonna figure it out. Mm-mm. He gonna figure it out. Let's go ahead and keep it pushing though, man. Let's go ahead. G Herbo uh gets snubbed by UIC. Kiki, why they why they hating on my yellow brother? You know, I really don't know. I feel like G Herbo is one of the most unproblematic rappers right now from Chicago. Like, you know, and I hate this because they do this a lot. You know, we in radio, we try to have shows. We've had this happen a couple times where we have a show, we promote it, the artist is excited, we're all excited, and then they CPD will wait until about two days before or the day of the show they've done that to us before too and say oh that person can't perform in chicago huh you know what i'm saying like i I didn't understand the logic behind it um i feel like you know we've learned whatever lesson y'all trying to teach us about you know crowd control and being able to have our events and security and things of that so i don't think it was a safety you know issue i i hate to see you know he can't perform in his own in his own city like you know we can't chief keep don't come here you know dirt every time dirt come here it's like oh we gotta make sure we got all this security we gotta you know and we gotta do all this extra clearance stuff and now you shutting down herbo i mean damn what's next chance like can y'all just leave our chicago rappers alone and let them perform here i mean they know the city better than anybody so you know i, I didn't understand that one at all i did it yeah, I agree. I agree, Kiki, because, you know, you got to understand that these artists aren't going to put themselves or their fans in danger. You know what right. I'm saying? They think especially somebody on G Herbo's level who's ascended to a place of like, I'm not going to fumble my back. You know what I'm saying? Even Dirk's there. Like, he's like, I'm not fumbling nothing. I'm on the straight and narrow doing what I have to do. And, you know, for the police to just pick a time, like, oh, well, the, the thing that I don't like is the consequence. Like, how about I perform and then I get fined. If you, you know, if you perform, you have to pay a fine. People will be like, all right, I'll pay the fine. I'm going to perform, you know. Um, but they're like, no, you can't have the event. So I just want to know. I just want to know. I'm going to ask the, the CPD, what what white groups have ever had this same protocol? Have you ever done this before? What 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 other groups do you do this for? Or is this just us? Because that's targeted. You know what I'm saying, and you don't even have nothing to bag it off, bag it up. So, but look at this, Zach. This is the part. No, you got to look at this. Take it. This, this, this cancel Maroon this Five too. This, we're talking about. I'm talking about something that happened two weeks, a week ago, technically a week ago. Lollapalooza. He performed twice. No problem. No problems. He performed Almost with Miley Cyrus. It might have been. And three then he times. got. It, it was three. It might have been three times. He didn't performed every day. Mm-hmm. What's the difference? What's the difference? He's performing at Lollapalooza. Grand Park and UIC are five minutes from each other. Mm-hmm. It is, and so what happens when he goes to UIC opposed to Lollapalooza? Okay, you make the promoter pay for some ex- increased security. Fine. You say, okay, we're going to put a protocol in place where he's going to get a police escort in. He's going to perform, and then we're going to take him right out. I can understand that. That's why I never understood the fact they did that to, for Rick Ross. Well, Rick Ross has some issues here because they, they police or escorted Rick Ross right to the stage and got his ass right out of there. Why you can't do that? I never understood why they, why they did that to Chief Keith. I never understood why they did that to Reese. I never understood why they do that to any, any of the artists 
like you say, I mean, any of us, any of the Chicago artists, excuse the ones that I didn't name, it makes no sense because you can you can secure the place. You can't yeah. secure the place to do it. Um, I do understand that there's things that could happen in the crowd. Uh, I, I do understand that, but the, the craziest thing is it's like, yo, we just performed, bro, like in Lollapalooza. That don't make sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hit Chicago. Uh, speaking of Chicago, uh, before we keep moving on, we got to talk about it. Uh, the violence is happening in the city. Um, that is uh, an interesting thing that we got going on right now. Continue shootings. We have police officers getting shot and, and killed. Uh, there have been multiple gunshot, multiple shootings throughout the city. What are you thinking about it, Kiki? I mean, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking because I really don't, I'm not going to lie, I don't feel safe. Like I got home on Saturday night and I was like, whoo, thank you, Lord, that I made it home. And it's like, damn, I got to feel like that in my own city. You know what I'm saying? Because I got home and I started reading what had just happened and I was blocks away from that. You know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't too far away from that. Wow. So, you know, you just never know if you're going to be in the wrong place at, you know, the wrong time. And it could be you. It could be your loved one. It could be, it's just the gun violence in Chicago is completely out of control. Like it's out of control. There's no, it's, it's not, a, it's like past talk point. You know what I'm saying? It's past talking at this point. Like something needs to be done. There's no way that an officer should pull you over and lose their life, like get shot in the head. It's just no, it's no reason for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm. there's no way to justify that. There's no way that that's not okay. It's not normal. And I'm starting to feel like us seeing 80 people shot, 86 people shot, 90 people shot. It's just like becoming the norm for us. Like every Monday, we know we're going to read those headlines. You know what I'm saying? And to me, that's sick. Like, that's really sick. That's a sick way to live. And our city really needs help changing that. Absolutely. Yeah, Zach. Uh, yeah. You see these different things, like Kiki said, you see them happening, and it seems like it, it's happening to normal people that, that like, like really don't have anything to do with the altercation sometimes. They just, yeah. it's just like they just there and then they get killed. I mean, how are you feeling? Well, they said that there, there was like, um, they, they classify mass shooting for four, shoot, four people getting shot or more. You know what I'm saying? So there was a, like 10 mass shootings this weekend, it's four or more. And they call them triple shootings when it's like three or more, you know, and we had like six of those for a total of like 84 people um, shot, 13 killed, you know, um, including that officer who lost, who lost their life. And, you know, I honestly, I, I, I value the officer's life as much as I value the other 12 people who were um, who were shot. None, none of them should have lost their life. And it's sad. 80, I, I really fear that we get numb, to, that we're getting numb to it. Yeah. I really do. I fear that we get numb to it, and I don't know what needs to change, but something has to. I mean, uh, Pastor, what's his name? Flagger? Flagger? Mm-hmm. What's my man? Name? Father Flagger. He, Father Flagger, Flagger, bro. He he did the uh, he did he did the uh, he did the the gun drive, you know, getting the guns off the streets or whatever. And I told y'all they was turning in old ass guns, you know, following the weekend eighty four something people. You know, I don't I don't really know the solution. I've heard people say. Well, we need to bring in the feds and the National Guard, you know, to secure things even more on these on these places that we know um, gun violence happens. Is that the answer? I, I, I don't know. But what I do know is that we're tired. We're tired of losing our brothers and sisters. We're tired of losing our youth. We, we're losing people not even 25 years old. You know, this is this is absolutely ridiculous and it's got to stop. So. I don't know about the no snitching stuff got to end. You know, in our culture, we don't want to say or tell nothing that we saw. Uh-uh. Shoot around me, I'm telling. If he had on blue jean. He had on that. That's that's the car right there. Officer, don't look at me. No, no don't look at me while I'm talking to you now. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me. Don't look at me. I'm telling you, but don't look. I'm over here. Yeah, yeah it was him. Yeah. Matter of fact, call me. I'm, I'm talking walk away from you. But for real, though, we, we got to stop this, man. This is crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. I like at the at this point you want to just like have all the past just bless Lake Michigan and we just drink holy water all the time. Something's gotta happen. Something literally has to happen. Now I remember when they brought the National Guard in a little bit after the looting and stuff, looting and stuff. That's an uncomfortable feeling. That's just an uncomfortable situation. Seeing big armored vehicles, people with big ass guns. It's just a, it's a weird way to live. But the crazy thing about it is 
If you go to places overseas, even in Mexico, if you've been to Mexico, you see how the police roll. Big ass guns. You see it. Big ass, all type of stuff. Because they not going. And it's going to get to a point in some of our major cities that you're, we're going to look like places across the water. I go to Paris, you go to Paris and the trains, train station, there's soldiers. They're not police, they're soldiers in Paris. And Paris is supposed to be the city of love. Now, they got, they got something going on in Paris where they want to make sure everybody cool. I'm going to plenty of other places and see like high level police or military presence. And that's going to look nuts to people in Chicago, but it's coming. It is 110% coming. But because the thing is, we had that. We had the the the, the press. They're they gonna come. Was, the real estate's the too high, spot. Zach. It was in the wrong places. They had it in. They had it downtown. That, That's true. They, they had it on Michigan Avenue, trying to protect downtown. If you're gonna have that presence, have it in. Have it where the stuff is happening. But it's it's gonna be everywhere. My thing is that you going the real estate is beginning to get too high here. Not in a sense of too high. It's getting high here, and. They are going to protect taxpayers that's paying this type of money to want to, want to be able to live in their neighborhoods and be safe. And that's not, and, and the crazy thing is, that's not a lot to ask. People just want to be safe. And it's nuts. It's people getting killed and shot in people's neighborhoods and on the expressway. And it's just like, like I said, I say it all the time. It seems like to me, if you argue with somebody, it's definitely going to be a shooting. Yeah, I mean, you taking a risk with your life, talking back, blowing a horn at somebody at the stoplight. You know, you taking a risk with your life, and that's we. It's sad we got to think that way, but I wish that the city would, you know, like all the resources and things that they put into the COVID nineteen pandemic. Like they realized how many people were dying in Chicago and how serious it was. The like the city shut down. They did all these things to help prevent it. I wish they took those same type of measures when it comes to the gun violence. Like. Put the resources together, have the meetings, have a press conference every single day to update us about what your plan is to, to you know, fight gun violence in our city. I wish that they would really handle that yeah. like it's a pandemic, because it really is. Like, we losing more people to gun violence a day, you know, or just as many as we have. You're right yeah, about that. yeah. So, yeah. you know. I mean, it's just like, how, shit. Hey, look, let's, let's get to this. Uh, switch gears a little bit. Little Boosie's always fun to hear from. Um, little, little Boosie sent a note to Kamala Harris about release to see murder. Uh, do you think it's gonna work, Kiki? Zach doesn't look like he thinks so. What, what do you think? I don't, but y'all know when Boosie talk, I listen. So when oh, <laughs> I said, and hey, you and look, Boosie, he was really coming from his heart. You could tell he was sitting in the car and he was like, Camilla, he called her a whole nother name. He was like, Camilla. I need you to free C murder, man. Man, C murder ain't do this, man. Then he was like, Carmen, listen, I need you to free C. I'm like, damn, Boosie, if you're gonna address the lady, get her name right. You know, that that was the, the wrong part. But I knew where his heart was at. And so, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really felt his heart in the message. And and Boosie, you know, he was really speaking from his heart. So hopefully, um, the VP heard, you know, Boosie's message and it'll put a spotlight back on C. Murder's case because right now C. Murder is serving a life sentence. He's on a hunger strike in jail, okay, because he's protesting the conditions that they've been living in in, in the Louisiana jail um, because of COVID. And so it's like getting real bad for him. Like the man been on a hunger strike for at least over a week, you know, so it's, it's a really serious subject and I don't, I'm not young, old enough to know if C. Murder did whatever he being convicted of. I don't know, but his name's C. Murder. So listen, I, I, I don't have a, <laughs> I don't know, free him or not, but listen, I just, you know, when Boosie cried out for the man, Boosie was sincere this time. And so hopefully, you know, Miss Harris heard him because he didn't call the Carmen and everything else, but his heart was in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey. Okay, uh, uh, we go. Zach, hey, y'all want to play a little His play name is C. Murder, Zach. That, I, I, I always thought that was. Please stop calling him C. Murder when you want to get a release. Call yeah, him yeah. his real name. I always thought that. I understand that. His name is Corey Miller, I believe. But listen, here's the thing. Let's play a game called. Let's play a game, y'all. Let's play the game called. <laughs> you know how you know you're not getting out of jail? <laughs> 
when Lil Boosie is coming to your defense, <laughs> calling on the vice president. If that's the best thing you got going, if that's the if the best thing you got going on your side is Boosie trying to talk to the, talk to the vice president on his third Instagram account, it's not happening. Right. You, you, in, you in there. I don't know what's worse, Boosie talking to Kamala Harris or having a public defender. But either way, <laughs> you're getting ready to take the deal. You're getting ready to take the deal. You know, your public defender don't get nobody out. Here's what you need to do. You just what you go yeah. take because you're going to end up doing some time. That's all he got is Boosie? It's the same. Now, here's my, here's my question, y'all. Do y'all think Master P has washed his hands with it? Master P is very, very vocal on everything. He always talks about cutting people off and people not learning. You know what I'm saying? I've done the best I can do. You know, has, has Master P, like his, his, Master P has a way better chance of getting something done than Lil Boosie. No, Ma Master P is 100% trying to get him out of jail. I definitely believe that. But I think it's a process. And I think at this point, it's become a super long process. And they try anything. And like you said, it's tough. You're probably at the end of the rope when you got to have Boosie plead to the vice president of the United States. But again, I've always said it. I will continue saying it. Please stop calling them C murder. Don't say get C murder out of jail. Because they don't want anybody named C murder doesn't want to, they want to keep you in jail. Yeah. That's just the name. It's just what it is. Yeah. It's what it is. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. All right. This is this is kind of weird, Kiki. And I want you to make me understand this story. Uh Diddy. Now I thought this was fake. Is Dave Young Miami? What the hell is going on with that? Baby, Young Miami. Yes. Okay. So you know, Diddy is all about the love era right now, and you know, I don't know who introduced him to Young Miami. I don't even know how they were in the same room. But sis, they snatched up Diddy, and she putting that young thing on the baby. Got him posted up on Instagram. <laughs> you know, she got him listening to the City Girls. Like Diddy, they cut his head different. He didn't got back in the gym. He talking about cuffing season, like it's lit. You know what I'm saying? City Girls is up 20 points because she didn't bag, Young Miami didn't bag Diddy. Like, you know, that's, listen, <laughs> listen. So yeah, it's happening. Mm -hmm, they're dating. Talk about odd couples, Zach. What the <laughs> hell? I don't know. I just, I would love to hear one of their conversations. I'll pay. <laughs> I'll pay whatever <laughs> to hear them talk to each other. I'm like, because you know how young Miami talk, like, period. Yeah. I'm like, Diddy, like, what you owe? Oh, you feel like you would? Like, I can't wait to hear that ghetto ass conversation. So that's that's all I'm waiting for. See them talk. That's it. Talk, I, I, I love it though. I ain't even, I'm not mad at young Miami. When I saw young Miami sitting on his lap drinking that, uh, whatever, one, yeah, Delion, one of his brands of tequila, I said, hey, she made it. Yeah. She made it. She grew up watching Diddy her whole life. You know that. Yep. She, now she's sitting on his lap drinking tequila. Come on, man. She came up. She came up. I am not mad at Young Miami. Keep doing your thing. Yes. Hey, no hate sure. coming from me. No hate coming from me. It's all love. I like it. I like the fact that Diddy got him a young thing. Yeah. Go ahead, Diddy. I ain't mad at neither one of them. This don't bother me at all, actually. <laughs> Look, mate, you got to make sure that they didn't get a, get a prenup because yeah, Miami gonna get in their pockets, bro. Whatever happens, you better make sure you prenup, make sure you put sick or sign something. Young Miami coming for their pockets, bro. That's the yeah, thing. Now I get it. You having fun, Diddy, but for one dude, this mature man, no young, I know it's gotta be, it's gotta be great. Cause that, like you said, that conversation can't be nothing. I'm no shade to Young Miami, but I'm just saying. We heard Young Miami's conversation, and we also heard, heard Diddy. Diddy and Young Miami's conversation. What they talking about? That's all I want to know. I got to know one topic, like Zach. I'm with Zach, Kiki. Ain't nothing to talk about. There's nothing to talk about, baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
Diddy taking his heart medication. He like I say, he got the gym. He probably going he went vegan to keep up with young Miami. She twerking and popping and it's a great time. It's nothing to talk about. It's just a great time. So, you know, Diddy is not with Young Miami for her conversation. You know what I'm saying? He <laughs> that. <laughs> He's not with her for a conversation. So, you know, Diddy is just trying to, you know, bring that vibe back. And so he had to go get him a new young thing. And that's what it is. Now, Young Miami, do not let him Cassie you, you know, because he good for that. Cassie was once hot and popping too. You know what I'm saying? And then she fell up under the Diddy spell, and the girl just, you know, lost yeah. it. What you gonna do with them? What you gonna do? Th this leads me into what I'm about to we about to go into with the with the Nick Cannon situation. But before we get to that, I want to remind everybody that's watching the pod, we have another installment of the Hennessy Never Stop Never Settle interview series coming up with Musa Deek Muhammad, who is yes, that's right, one of the one of the most popular uh, popular promoters in the world and entrepreneur and that's true it's the headliner group the people who throw live yes you're going to hear one of the people who started it crazy he is the backbone of the headliner group and you get a chance to hear him on a never stop never settle society interview series all right uh let's get to this there is levels to this this is there's levels we're gonna we're gonna get to we're gonna try to attack all the levels pop fam um nick cannon basically said some of the craziest things ever in a breakfast club interview. Even my toxic ass was like, what in the <laughs> hell is Nick saying? Even my toxic ass. I'm toxic as hell was like, this is a bunch of, like, I'll get to that. This is a bunch of shit. Nick Cannon basically said, we are falling under a Eurocentric uh, way of thinking when we're trying to be with just one woman. Says, hey, look, I don't want to own a woman. I don't want to own her. We we are in this together. And it's really the woman who allows me in. It is her that allows me in. So we, we agree. It was a bunch of stuff. Do you agree with Nick Cannon's way of thinking, saying that African-American men or men, period, have adopted, no, well, Africa, we say you're searching. African-American men have adopted some. Did I lose y'all? You there. No, you there. Okay. They adopted something that doesn't come from Africa, in a sense. We uh, we supposed to have multiple wives, we supposed to have multiple families. Kiki, you hold up. Yeah. You agree? Do you agree with what what Nick Cannon was saying, Zach? I don't know if I agree or not, because I, I don't know. But I I will tell you this. <laughs> that's a Mary Why that? that's a Mary riding the fist ass comment, Zach. Like I just want to know this: why Why is that the only thing that we want to take over from Africa? We we go <laughs> black men bring that up all the time. It's so much African traditions that we don't never talk about, but we be like, yeah, they got multiple wives, yeah, kings and queens, man. We yeah. multiple wives. Polygamy, man, that's from the Europeans, you know what I'm saying? Guess what? Eat so it's eating pork and you eat bacon every morning. So, you know, you you did you, you don't say nothing about that. You know, you don't say nothing else about the way that Africans ate, you know what I'm saying, or lived and no, it it don't work. You can't have polygamy if you're gonna eat like a European, do everything else like a European, but then take this little piece of Africa that you that you think benefits you. Yes. <laughs> Knock it off, man. Yes. Nick Cannon, Nick Cannon, Nick Cannon. You were just married with Mariah, big as hell, tatted on your back. I don't want to hear none of that. Mm. I don't want to hear none of that. You was in love, bro, and it didn't work, and you were like, I'm not going to get married. I'm going to do my thing, which is great, which is great. But don't give us the game that you give your side, bitch. He ran the game that he ran on his bitches on us yeah. and thought it was going to work. And I was like, that sounds good if you're rich. That's rich talk. That don't even sound good. It don't, it don't even come out like that, bro. Mm -mm. You stuttering and everything. Uh, we, 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 we were slaves. Uh, uh, you know, I don't want to own you. That, boy, stop. That only sounds good if you got some money and you're talking to some women that want to be a part of what you got going on, which I'm not mad at because he's got everything under control. So I'm not hating on Nick, but don't I hate when people try to force their way of thinking on us and try to make this force their BS on us like it makes sense, like we stupid. You know that it make no sense. <laughs> Kiki, when you heard that that great game that Nick gave out, do you think he was speaking to help men get through the men of the culture get through their problems? He trying to help brothers out, or was no, he just he spitting to, game? 
He's trying to send y'all the hell off. That's what he's doing. He's sending y'all off. Now, when he when Nick deliver it, though, because he got the bonnet, he got the little glasses on, you know what I'm saying? He's cheesing. It, we we could take it from Nick, because I didn't told y'all now, the way Nick's stimulus package look like it's set up, when you go have a baby, you have a maternity shoot, you be happy, you live, you <laughs> not have to work no more. It looks, it looks pretty appealing to me. So y'all know I want Nick to pull up on me any day now. So when he was on the breakfast club, I was like, yes, my African king. I don't want you to own me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't have to own me. We could be partners in this thing, Nick. So I was totally on board with the shenanigans. See, I don't know if y'all took it that way, but I, I, after watching that interview, I understand how he didn't convince all seven of these women to have twins. I completely I understand. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Nick, it's the bonnet for me. And if the stimulus package is hidden like they say, I'm still here, baby. You need a plus size baby mama. I didn't told you. So I completely understood what Nick was trying to tell y'all. I did. Now it's different when, when Toxic Tony tried to tell us that. We're not going off Toxic Tony. But when nah, you put the little nah, nah, I'm gonna be a very rich man to have that conversation. Right. You put the little body on Tony, we might fall for it. <laughs> no, no, Kiki. I'm not gonna first of all, I'm I can talk, but I don't got a lot. I learned that there's levels to that conversation. That conversation Nick was giving, I was like. I can see how that works. Everybody that heard Nick say that was like, I see how it works. I see how it works. It's crazy. But again, it is levels to it. I don't want dudes and pop them. I want, look, look, listen to me, y'all. <laughs> don't, I know, act, I got active friends. I'm going to tell you, you mix great vocabulary with acting skills, it's they can do pretty much anything. They can manipulate the world. It's insane. Then yeah. that's what Nick is. Nick is still a great actor and got a very, very good command of the English language. Um, I, I can tell you this. I've said it before. This is another example of it. Is that there's levels to when you can how you talk to women. Hey, Tony, Tony from Country Club Hills couldn't get away with saying some of the stuff that Tony Capone could. Matter of fact, none of the things that I say to women at all, Tony from Country Club Hills could not get away from, get away with. None of it. Not one thing. But you know what? They're going to put up with some Tonga Pong. Mm. There is a, the thing that Nick is doing, I couldn't get away with. Fellas, <laughs> don't try to get away with it. And you got to have a certain bank account. You To live like Nick, you got to have real bread. If you out here and you trying to have Four and five baby mamas, six baby mamas, seven. It, it, forget the baby mamas. Hmm. If you out here trying to have a team of five women, you cannot do it, family, unless your pockets is doing something special. You have to be able to change each baby mama life. Yes. And when I say change your life, you have to have enough money to where they don't have to work anymore and they have every single thing they need. That's the only way that conversation can come out your mouth. Period. If you if, if you if you can only do a little bit, if you pay a few bills and she still gotta work, uh-uh. Shut up. Don't talk like that. Mm -mm. Put that back in your mouth. Don't say that. Because you ain't there yet. You ain't there no. yet. You ain't got no button. That's <laughs> it. That's it. You can't you can't do it. I, it's just a, it's just one of those things. It's just one of those things that that I've noticed as, as a grown man. I saw it when Nick was talking, I just was like, yeah, bro, this works. Because if Nick was broke and had that command of the English language and could act, if Nick was making sixty thousand dollars, he's trying. Hey, Nick, shut your ass up. You They're not go. listening to that. But you, Nick, can you can literally say, "I got you." Yeah. What's what's a five thousand dollar rent to Nick? Nothing. Easy. What's taking care, of, put some money, so nothing. Nick probably got everybody real, real straight. Real straight, people don't realize the mass singer is Nick's baby. Yeah, but see, what you got to realize is not—it's not what he said. At the end of it, you—you you said what matters. At the end of all that talk, if you're not saying, "I'm gonna take care of it," at the end, none of that matters. Nope. I'm gonna take care of it, or I'm gonna take care of you after you say all that. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna take care of you. You got to say all that, then end it like that. Yes. Or started like I'm gonna take care of you. Don't worry about it. See, I'm a slave. All she heard was, "Oh, I'm gonna get taken care of." 
<laughs> I didn't hear none of that, no way. All that stuff with the bonnet on, Kiki talking about, oh, it's the bonnet. And I didn't know damn bonnet. bonnet. You know, it adds a little something. You trust a man who who is confident enough to wear a turban every day. like you. And you know him. got a bag and a whole TV show. Exactly. You know, and running network and has created and birthed the careers exactly. of so many people and eating off music and eating off television and comedy. He just makes us feel safe. And he's so nice. You know, he's a nice young man. Nick is the only man that you could take him home to your grandma and say, Grandma, I am baby mama number six. This is Nick. And grandma would be like, he's all right with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, he has that. And it's just, you know, y'all like to call him corny. Y'all like to say he not funny. He can't rap. Whatever the haters say about Nick Cannon. But one thing about Nick Cannon, he has mastered on being a good baby daddy. And that's, you know, very hard to find in America. So, Nick, <laughs> you keep living your little toxic life. And we, well, I mean, so, you know, y'all good, whatever. But yeah, I'm talking about Nick. So, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> he has mastered. It's hard to find. It's hard, you know. It's hard. It's, 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 it's one of them things. It's one of those. It's one of those things. But I just want to let all of the pop fam know: it, don't listen to not one thing that Cannon says at all. All of his conversations are meant for women. Look at how Kiki is gushing over Nick Cannon's <laughs> interview. Look, at, it's do not listen to it. It is meant for the female mind to be like, oh, Nick, you so. And you think it in your mind because Kiki, you look at the way Kiki acting, you're like, yo. Or you see your girl, she watched the interview. Ah, I see our Nick. And you think that's going to work for your ass. No. <laughs> no, it ain't. It ain't working for you, fam. Don't do it. Stay away. Trust me. I'm going to be working time at least 80. At least. I hate you, man. <laughs> I thought he Now I'm just playing. But it's going to be a, uh, let's all, uh, yeah. I got kids. Only oh, got two, two left. It's on me. Two left. that's still on the ticket. But still, and the, and the clock is ticking. <laughs> the clock is ticking. But I'm telling you, it's what the clock is. that that way in life. That way in life, bro, is is a, is a, is a dangerous life, man. It's a dangerous life. Yeah. And, 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 and I've had to the pop family like, oh, Tony, you got. I, I've been very transparent. You just got to watch all the other pop, all the episodes to catch up on my personal life. I, I'm a great. I think I'm a great baby daddy. I think that I think that I see my kids. Uh, but I would tell anybody to being a baby daddy sucks ass. <laughs> Don't do it, bro. It's the it's the, it sucks ass. Like anybody that's had a kid outside of having like Zach having a family. Sucks ass. You want to know why, bro? I give everybody the biggest thing that every baby daddy that tears his soul apart on the inside, but he got to do this. <laughs> and when another dude is in the house with your kid, you got to act like, oh, yeah, this is cool. It's not cool. It sucks. <laughs> Even if the guy's nice, you still be like, fuck. It's like that. Yeah. It's always, fuck. <laughs> it's no way. You say hi, you be like, Ugh. it ain't even a. I, I guess with some dudes, it's probably they care about them having sex with it with their baby mama and all of that. That I'm beyond. I don't, you know, when a relationship over, I'm beyond. But it's the being around my kids. I'm like, Ugh. and I know they're nice guys. I don't have a problem with them, but it's still just be like, it still gets a little bit. I can see get to wake up. It's like imagine another dude. Waking up with, with your baby, with your with your son. He's so young, bro. I, you know, I can't even think of that right now. <laughs> look at man, look at that, look at look. Uh, he gets the shakes. Uh, he gets yeah, the shakes, bro. He's so young. Maybe when he get older, I could feel it better. But right now, it's just no. Nah, I need to see that little head. You know, that little. I yeah, I get what you said. That's a feeling. Yeah, Kiki, you got brothers and cousins and, and things of that nature. And that's and, true, and, yeah. You got friends. You see how how guys at. Yeah, that's why y'all got to make it work. Mm -hmm. Don't now, be some of y'all. It ain't gonna work sometimes because you got to pick wisely. That's why some of it just ain't, some shit just ain't supposed to work. That's true. You got to <laughs> choose wisely. You are absolutely right. Choose wisely because I thought you was gonna say child support because I don't have kids, but if I I can't imagine paying child support. Ooh, baby, I don't even like to pay taxes. So you know I don't want to pay child support. Like I gotta pay for you and come get you and still take you out on the weekends <laughs> and hang out with like 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, cause I, I would be a real deadbeat. Okay. And, don't ask me for nothing. If it don't come out the chat sport, don't ask me for nothing. <laughs> they call me. He need baseball shoes. I, I pay my child support, right? That would be it. So I, you know, I understand because I don't like support the child. Support. support the child. I paid. I paid it. You know, so uh, whew, I can't do it. I can't do it. So you know, Jesus, that I, that is that's funny, man. Uh, let's go ahead. We got a shorter pod today because, of course, we got to never stop, never settle interview series. Uh, get a chance to talk to Musadiq Muhammad. Remember, stay tuned. You do not want to miss this interview. It's amazing. Uh, I, I, so many jewels. So many jewels in this interview. Uh, let's go ahead and get to these final thoughts. Zach Bug, you got a prayer? Not tonight, baby. Just to wake up in the morning. Early. Okay. You've been filling in for the morning show, so we're going to let you yeah. slide a little bit. Final <laughs> thoughts, though. I know you got those. Oh, okay. Yeah, final thoughts, man. Stay black and die. You know what I'm saying? That's all you can do. Stay black and die. All right. Uh, yeah, no, these final thoughts suck. The pod is... I, sorry, I Bob, mean, man. Okay. The, the, I, I don't know. The pod is I, a little, a little shaky I apologize. There. I apologize for those final thoughts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, we made it. We made it all the way to the end, baby. We made it to the finish line. It's 64 episodes. <laughs> So you can rise up to them. Final thoughts. Please. Um, shout out to the Pod Fam because the Pod Fam been going crazy, showing us a lot of love. We see the comments. We see, like, I posted some of their comments that they do throughout the week. Um, so shout out to y'all for all the comments, all the love on the episodes. And um, I do want to say shout out to everybody who has entered the show out with Kiki contest. Um, the pressure, yeah, yeah, I feel the pressure. Okay, it's like you know, I'm just putting y'all on the stage at the Black Women's Expo. I don't got a record contract, you know what I'm saying? I'm not about to take you out the hood. Uh, but you know, shout out to everybody who has <laughs> <laughs> the contest. They own me, Zach. They own my ass. Uh, I can see it. I know it. You know, it is. It's a really dope opportunity, though. That was the whole point of it. Like, I want to show out. I want somebody from Chicago to get on that stage and really, really show out. So, shout out to how many people you picking? Huh? How many people you picking? That's one. One slot. Oh, you got a what? hard It's only job. one? Do not one want to keep job. Yes. yes. Wait a minute. I slot. thought this was like a showcase, like six people. It's one? It's one. So we do a showcase every week on the WGCI Instagram page. I let them go live and do whatever they want, right? And that'd be wild. But I can't put everybody on this stage. It's only one. 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 Yeah. So, you know... um, Y'all have your stuff to together. Huh? Have your shit together. If exactly. you want to be that one, exactly. find a way to stand out. You know, you're gonna be in, you're gonna be on the Black Women's Expo stage, the main stage. Yeah. With Kiki. So you know, no, everybody can't get up there with Kiki. Hell you talking about. It's just one. So make yourself stand out for real. <laughs> what Zach said. So you know, shout out to everybody <laughs> who was entered. We just count down, baby. And uh, you know, that's about it. Love y'all. Uh, and I am going to do this. I promise y'all this. And this is my fault. This is a lot of it's my fault. I'll take, I'll take blame for it. Mm -hmm. Is that we supposed to have merch a long time ago. A long time ago. But I mean, you don't know how long the pie, you don't want to put money up. You don't know how long the thing gonna last. You know, that might get too big. He, he might get too busy. I don't know. I can win the lottery. I can win a scratch off. I got scratch offs over here that I ain't scratched off. I love scratch offs, but it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot going on. But one thing I am going to do, because we keep saying it all the time, we need Pod Fam t shirts. We need them. We need a what more can I say Pod Fam t shirt. And I am going to get that done. I promise y'all. That's my final. I promise I'm going to get that done. Give me two weeks. Give me two weeks. All right. That's We're it. Gonna hold you to right. it. Pod Fam, hold him to it. Yes. Hold him to it, y'all. About a year ago, he said he's gonna have some cups for us. Still waiting, Zach. I did. I did. I gotta be. I, I gotta be a better. So now we didn't skip those cups. We in we in shirts now. We Maybe shirts that's what you now. need to get. We getting the shirts, bro. We getting the shirt. I'm telling you. <laughs> I, I keep hit. I love the Pod Fam. I love that the Pod Fam love their name. They, uh, they, they, they definitely respond to it. We, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. 
So that being said, make sure you stay right here and watch Musadiq Muhammad, the, the Never Stop, Never Settle interview series is up next. You already know, what more can I say? Hey man, welcome to it, the What More Can I Say? <laughs> Never Stop, Never Settle interview series where we are highlighting entrepreneurs, Black entrepreneurs. I'm telling you, we're talking to some of the most important people across the country. Uh, it is our honor to talk to our brother, Musa Deek Muhammad. How are you doing? Headliner, market group, every, this, the brother does everything in Miami. Uh, how you doing, brother, first of all? Man, listen, man, I'm blessed. You understand me? And I'm thankful for this day. And this opportunity, man, to be uh, just, you know, enjoying with, with some other beautiful black people, man. So I'm here. Absolutely. Uh, we, I definitely appreciate Hennessy and, and them highlighting all of our entrepreneurs. This is such a big deal. Musa Dick, I, I, I want people to know, because a lot of people here hear a lot of marketing. They hear a lot of different things. They go to live when they go to Miami. They trying to find out what. Give us your story. How did you even just come up with this whole this whole thing that you got going on in Miami, which is a, a conglomerate, brother? Well, first of all, it started with my cousin. My cousin, let me give you the backdrop, right? I'm from Washington, D.C. And my cousin was playing ball in Virginia and was recruited around the nation to play bad. He could have went, he could have went to any school. He could have went to, whether it's UCLA, Texas, uh, University of Maryland, whatever, Miami. I have a connection to Miami, right? And I don't know if you can say this, but I think I said it on the Wisconsin, but I had just got out of prison. And he came to see me, right? And he was like, cuz, where should I go to school? And what I knew, I wanted to leave D.C. because I wanted to start something new. I say, listen, let's go to Miami. Miami is green. They still wearing jerry curls down there, right? And I say, I want to start. I'm, I'm giving you facts, man. This is this is 1990. This is 1991, 91, 92. I say, listen, I don't want to hustle no more. I'm a square up. I'm gonna go try my hand at business in Miami. You go to Miami, go to school, and once I come down there a year later. We're going to set it off. So sure enough, a year later, I come to Miami, right? I get connected. I open up Headliners Barbershop. Headliners Barbershop turns to be, turns in to be the epicenter for the University of Miami football players and the Miami Heat players. So I had everybody who was anybody ever coming to Miami used to come to my barbershop. Now my cousin was a hell of a ball player. And so when summertime, <clears throat> when the season was over, a lot of the players used to come down, whether it was, you know, Glenn Rice, Tim Hardaway, whatever. And I'm telling you, Tim Hardaway. <laughs> so I'm at the gym. I'm at, this is 1990. Now we're talking 1994. I'm driving a Range Rover in the six series. Niggas in the league weren't driving Range Rover. Niggas were driving Blazers and shit like that. So I'm driving a Range Rover. And a six series. So I come in the gym one day talking shit. I'm from DC. And I tell a nigga, I tell a nigga, I got 10,000 on my cousin. He'll beat any of you niggas. They're like, man, who this, who this nigga talking this shit? It was me. So anyway, give you a backdrop. <clears throat> so my cousin wind up getting put off the team, University of Miami. He goes to East Oklahoma and graduated from DePaul. So in the meantime, I have the barbershop is crazy, and I have a clothing store. So once he gets his marketing degree, I tell him to come back here. And my thing was, we're going to open up a string of barbershops, like Supercut, right? Okay. Smart. It never, it never panned out. So for him, he was partying all the time. I wasn't a party guy, but I knew all of the people. And so I went to him and said, yo, Shorty. Stop partying. I'm going to lean on these dudes and we're going to start making them do parties. Take your marketing degree and let's market parties. I'll put the money behind you to do it. The rest is history. Mm. The, rest, the rest is history where headline is down, right? It's the biggest, if you want to say promotional, world-renowned 
joint in the world because we go to Vegas, New York. We've been to Chicago and we fucked this city up over the last 10 years. And then now, now I gotta, let me go back. So of course we took some losses, right? The first time he did a party, I think I lost like 70,000 and he was fucked up. Now I'm talking, I'm going back to 99, 2000. I gave him shoebox money. He was fucked up because he never seen that kind of paper. But I'm a hustler and I told him, I say, listen, you didn't steal my money. You did everything right. You just didn't make it. No problem. You didn't take it from me. That's, that's the game we play because I take chances. So fast forward, he got on. He was, you know, he was doing his thing, wins, losses, whatever. So he started doing the Sunday night at the Forge. The Forge closed down. Fountain Blue had just came back and put a million dollars in there, and they had a, they had they had a spot called Lid. They was losing money. They was hemorrhaging. They were about to close. Wow. This is a fact. Hey, listen, they was about. They was about to close. Mm. Just so happened the forge was closing as well. So the boys come to my cousin and say, listen, we want to give you a Thursday night. At that time, we was doing Thursday at Karoo and Y, killing them. We knew, we knew the kind of numbers we were making. Now nah, we don't want a Thursday. I want a Friday. Them Europeans ain't want to give us no Friday night. No problem. We're going to give y'all a Sunday. Sunday is a... Ain't, ain't nobody partying on Sunday. Right? Right. That's almost 12 years ago. And we have done what Studio 54 Legendary talked about. We do it... What, what they did in a year, we're doing two months. Mm. And we've been consistent for 12 years. 12 years. Be honest, you know, 12 years. So, you know, that's that's the blessing. And so, of course, we've taken that to go on and do, you know, I mean, we got a rack of shit, whether it's from the festivals, whether it's from taking our show on the road, whether it's from our restaurants, you know, whether it's from our, uh, our youth organization. I think just a bunch of shit that we're doing, even... You know, whether we get locally involved in politics, because all these things really work together. Because if we don't have the community, if we don't have the right people that we put in place uh, uh, for the political game, you have no power. So these are the games and these are the things that we play in, in our city, where we have taken an area that was the worst. The worst. And it was at the right time that we had a young brother, man, from the area who believed in us. You understand me? Where, yeah. you know, the old politicians, they played the a game as they were taught. Fortunate enough, we had a young brother that went against the grain and made that area now just magic, magic city, to be honest with you. So, you know, that that's where we are. So, and I'm the guy, even though my cousin is the face, I'm the guy in the background. Like I never like it ain't it ain't it ain't my place to shine. It's my place to put things together. Very cool. Very cool. Kiki, I know you got a question. He just dropped so many jewels. Yes. People that are watching this, you have to pay attention to what he is saying. And this it, it, it's so many different ways I want to ask you a ton of questions. But Kiki, go ahead, jump in there. Well, you know, because you definitely drop a gems, especially about the local politician part, because so many people I know in Chicago, they try to start out in nightlife or do things in the city and you run into it because you have no friends in the political space and you can't get anything done. They want to shut you down, you know, and especially yes. when it comes to nightlife and black people, they always give us a yes. hard time. But y'all was yes. able to turn live on a Sunday into a legendary thing. Like I flew down there for my birthday to come to live on a Sunday, you know, so that's a big okay. thing. Thing, you know, but I gotta ask you this: uh, being an entrepreneur, what has been your biggest lesson that you've learned throughout this whole journey? Like, what's one big lesson you'll never forget? Never stop, never quit. Come on, yeah. I just, I just told, I just told you the first party he threw. 
I lost seventy thousand cash. Woo! I would have quit. I ain't gonna lie. Now I, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, you you gotta understand where I'm from. I come from nothing. Yeah. I come from nothing. So for me to for for me to lose is a lesson. Mm. Right? For me to lose is a lesson. If I win all the time, I never know how to handle defeat. Another gym. That's it. That's it. That's it. You know and, what I'm saying? So yeah. the, the thing this is facts. that I say this, especially for people about like yourself, they're in our community, you know, like you say, it's either you was a hustler, you could dribble a basketball, you could, you could run super fast, uh, but somebody could be like you. They could be exactly like you. They could they could strive to be. You don't have to be six foot ten to, to have a the never stop, never settle mentality. You don't have to be able to run fast as lightning to have a never no. stop, never settle mentality. What is what are some of the things that you would give a person? Those jewels, like things that they person starting out. Beside that, beside the never stop, never quit. What would you tell them on, on, on their road as they are looking to start? They're looking to see like, yo, they it's an open space here. I can fit in here. Dedication, discipline, desire, determination. Let me say it again. Dedication, discipline, desire, and determination. Like, let me give you another instance. I got the number one wing spot in Florida. And like I tell people, I've been doing this 20 years. Not one year, not two years, not five years where they say most business fail. 20 years. I've been rated damn near 11 to 12 times in the city of Miami, number one wing spot, right? When I initially started, Tim Hardaway was my partner. Like, I used to talk so much shit to him that like, <laughs> yo, nigga, let's, let's get together, right? And he invested with me, right? So when he invested with me, the little, the little money he gave me in 45 days, I tripled that money. Tripled it and gave it back to him. So I do good business. Mm. So we talk about number one, you know, and there's other things that I've done that may not have worked, but if I fail, let me figure out how I fail. And then let me, and let me, you know, let me remix it and go back at it again. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know nothing about, you know, uh, getting a paycheck. I've never, I, I don't know anything about that. I don't know, no, I don't know anything about somebody telling me you can take vacation or use your sick days. Mm. Every day I get up, I hunt because I'm a lion. Every day I get up, I hunt. That's all I look for is opportunities. And if you don't look for opportunities, you ain't going to eat. If you don't eat, you ain't going to shit. If you don't shit, you're going to die because you're starving. There's too much money out here to starve. Period. Yes. There's too much paper out here to stop. Motherfuckers risk their lives to get on a raft and come over here because they say this is a land opportunity. But you got people that sometimes sit around some oh, these niggas in the city ain't support me. These people right here hate Chicago because these niggas hate me. You looking for the wrong ones to look to get on. Hmm. I want the squares. I don't want the hip niggas. I want the squares. Because I'm going to turn the squares on to a hip nigga. <laughs> See, the hip niggas don't look at you like they think me. Come on, Kiki. Hey, Kiki. <laughs> you, I mean, this is, listen, I'm giving you real life. You are. <laughs> he can give, give, give us so much game. I hope yes. people are. I, you have a notepad out and write some of this down. Okay. Think, yes. think about, listen, I'm not looking for the hip niggas to follow me because the hip niggas said he, he might get too much. I'm going to look for the niggas who want to be here but don't know how to, so I'm going to reach them and they're going to pour in their support so much that the hip niggas now going to have to pay attention to me. I mean, I got to go fuck with this nigga right here because he doing something different. Yeah, nigga, I don't need you. Mm. I don't need you. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. Listen, you come to this town, I ain't going to name no names, right? <clears throat> but I've gave inspiration and birth to a lot of them. A lot of them. And most of them, those who are down here, will tell you. And I give it to them for free. Mm. Anybody that know me, come talk to me. I'm going to give it to you for free. Because I really want all of us to win. See, my main goal is black revolutionary. 
period. Period. I come from Washington, D.C., where all I knew about black mayors, black councilmen, black teachers, black business. Anything other than that is foreign to me. So that's where I come from. So when I see us win, I rejoice of us winning. I rejoice in us being successful. I want to salute them. I want to support them. I want to, I want to you know, I, man, I, I fucks with that. That's what I want to do. Anything other than that, man, is treason against the black nation. It's hypocritical. It's hypocritical not to see us win. It goes against our very grain in nature if we don't want to see each of us riding the gold chariot. You understand me? Flowing in the finest raiment. All the jewels on, but talking intelligent. And then we fight vigorously against anybody that oppose our rise. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Probably the best interview I've had uh, ever, okay. period. I'm and I've been doing this for 20 years. And this might be the best interview I've ever had. This is Man, insane. For real. Uh, I, Kiki, I know you got another question I before you ready I to let I, it go. Because I, I, keep, I know that you inspire so many, right? That, that you talk, you talked about that being a part of the city, so many people you've given free game to. But like, who inspires you? Who are some of those people that you, you know, when you were in your situation prior to where you are now, you was like, man, I got to change my life because of this. So I see how this person is winning. Let me see if I can get in that lane. Who inspires you like that? Great question. You know, listen, I'm inspired by black people winning. And that can be good or bad. Like, I can, I, listen, I can be inspired by the, what's the, the young Greek boy who just won, who won the shit, right? Giannis, yeah. The, the Giannis. I can be inspired by him, but I also can be inspired by the nigga who used to wash cars. And now he, you know, now he got a mobile car wash. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because like I always tell people, listen, I made my first million at 19 in cash. Mm. I'm 54 years old, I'm still living. You know what I've seen? You know what I had to go through to survive Washington DC, the murder capital of the world? So I'm inspired just by living and people winning. You understand me? So you're right. So when we talk about the odds, man, the odds have been against me all my life. But guess what? Fuck the odds. I'm the new paradigm. Woo. When you see me, I'm winning. Yeah. I ain't complaining. When you see me, I'm winning. And as long as you don't come against my efforts and my and, and my uh, my motivation to win, then we'd be all right. It's only when you when you try to thwart or stop my progress is when you're gonna see that killer come out of me because I will I will not allow you to make me lose. See niggas like to fight just to fight. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm fighting to win. I'm fighting to win. Yeah. Every time. I'm fighting to win. I give you another instance. I tell people all the time, listen, do you know what it's like? My average, the average ticket in my restaurant is $16, right? I'm in the worst part of Miami. The average ticket is, yeah, I think $16. Do you know what it's like to go against the big boys like Wendy's? They go get a double cheeseburger, four chicken McNuggets, a fry, a soda, and a cookie for $4. <laughs> but yet ain't nobody selling more chicken than me and I'm doing two or three hundred customers a day in the hood so every time you come to my store I'm going to greet you with a smile I'm going to give you such a service that even if it's bad because my service was so good you're going to say man I'm coming back just for him and that's how I survive because I want us all to be satisfied and winning period yep. 
Period. I love it. Love it. I love, love it. it. I hope people take it, take it. No, who's the you, you are, uh, you like say you are a legend. Uh, I'm I, I, also a ghost in a, in a sense. You hear about you see we hear your cousin. Your cousin's the front man, and he he's right. a legend as well. Uh, y'all continue the great business in, in Miami, and just the fact that you're able to you you done the key things what an entrepreneur does. You see that space, you find it, you develop it, and then you then you want to make it grow. Uh, and just yes. the, the thing, the passion that you have is I, I, I can. That's the key. You have a you have a passion, and even on this Zoom call, we can feel. Yes, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So when y'all come to Miami, it's on me. Hey, I, yeah, I'm gonna hold you to it because Miami get I'm, both hands in your pocket. Okay, <laughs> we coming. Facts. Facts. When y'all listen, just come and watch me make my word bond. Okay, all right. I'm gonna hold you to that now. I'm gonna come to Miami. Fact. I was like, Fact. D, we gotta shake it. We gotta make it shake, baby. Let's go. All right, ain't no problem. Already, no man. Hey, hey, man. You continue to never stop, never settle, brother, and keep being a shining light to, to black people in general. I hope everybody that watches this this interview watch it again because it was too much to take in the first time around. You got to watch this two or three times because he dropped so many jewels, man. I appreciate you so much, brother. Yes, sir. I appreciate y'all. Okay, Miss Kiki. So we done? We good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>